Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to your live investment dominator Q and A call. And I am Warren Davis. We are here on this bright Monday, the seventeenth of February, seventeenth February, five p.m. to get your questions answered. And uh, we are heck, glad that so many of you have uh, joined us. We uh, do regret that we were out last week. Um, with a bad case of the flu. And uh, thank you, Jim. Yes, I am actually, actually I'm feeling better. Not quite 100%, but you know, hey, we are, as uh, my parents would teach me, we are on this side of the grave. So we're doing good. As long as you're on this side of the grave, you still have hope and there's still opportunity to progress. So. Uh, we sure thank you for all the well wishes and uh, yeah, last week was a little tough, but uh, this week we're looking for good and many, many prosperous things to take place. We do have a two-day workshop coming up here this weekend and uh, on the th Thursday and Friday. So that is one of our public service announcements that we want to make sure everybody keeps in mind that we will be canceling uh, the webinar for this Thursday coming up, um, this Thursday the 20th, because uh, we'll be in a two-day Maximizer workshop. Hopefully, a lot I'll be seeing a lot of you there. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, I did communicate that. Um, and I will go, as usual, I'll be sending out the communication to cancel the webinar and also where it should send you an email so that you won't uh, log in mistakenly and uh, end up getting you know, disappointed thinking that there's going to be a webinar. Those that can see my screen, hopefully you can see my LPG deal flow and it sounds like uh, y'all can hear me okay. Uh, my indicators here that uh, indicate that you can, so we're gonna go ahead and proceed and get your questions answered. We had quite a few questions from last, the, the last time we had the webinar was on the 10th, so that was a week ago today and uh, we did have some questions that we didn't get a chance to get answered <clears throat> even on our Thursday meeting. So uh, let's see if I have anything else. Um, yeah, I've been hearing that there are many out there that uh, have been feeling sick and have been running into this flu and, and all I can just tell you is that there's a very nasty strain going around and so you don't want to take any chances. Um, if you got medication, go ahead and take your medication. And then what a lot of people have been doing is thinking that they're past it. And then they start going out, moving around, doing uh, you know, what they consider to be normal activity. And then it comes back and hits them again. So we want you to be wise there and uh, not get caught up with that. Give yourself plenty of time to heal up. So anyway, we're looking forward to seeing many of you in the two day maximizer workshop. And those of you that are, are going to be coming, you, you already know about the big three, but uh, if you're brand new with us, um, you can see our LPG deal flow screen. We're going to get your questions answered. Those of you that are here with us for uh, the first time, make sure that uh, you know how to put in your questions. Just type them in. Most of you already know how. Um, Okay, uh, most of you have uh, have not been able to or have been able to ask successfully ask your questions. And I appreciate the fact that when you've been asking your questions, you put in a question mark before you actually ask the question or you put in the word question so that I can uh, differentiate or distinguish between a question and an actual comment. Okay, so there we have that and again here to get your questions answered so let's get started with one we had from last week it uh kind of a i'm a, a i don't remember exactly if i didn't know who exactly mentioned this question so i'm just going to state it as a general question and, and it has to do really with uh, the APN numbers that are coming into Investment Dominator. And um, the question is, 
do we have to be concerned about the APN numbers as they're coming into the investment dominator um, if they're not perfect? And so um, basically, if you can see my screen here, you'll notice that uh, we have these prospect records. And so the question has to do with, you know, if we have APNs here that may be coming in and they are not, um, they may not be completely accurate um, as they are either coming from, you know, Rebo Gateway or they might be coming from even the county and there might be some mistake on the APN. So the question is, you know, if they're going out as prospects, you know, this is your first communication to your customers, do we really have to be concerned or how concerned do we really need to be about these initially going out on our neutral letters? And uh, quite honestly, I don't worry too much if the APN is not perfect coming into the, uh, especially going out on a neutral letter. And the reason being is um, once, you know, if you're using, let's say, Pat Live as your call center, or even if you're the one taking the calls, um, when the person, you know, the owner calls back, um, they're usually a person, if they'll straighten out in terms of the APN. They'll let you know, hey, well, that my APN number, you know, that came in on my letter was not correct. And at this point, you can just go in, you can edit the record, and you can put the correct APN on that particular record. So uh, my point is, as long as it's a, you know, prospect, going out as a prospect, you don't have to worry too much because the fact that the letter got to them and the fact that they're calling back now um, is really what's important. You want it to mainly to get the communication to get to the customer and have them realize, yeah, we want to uh, purchase your land. So, so I would say don't spend too much time being concerned. Um, and uh, okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So hopefully that gives a little clarity there uh, with the APNs coming in. Uh, we do have some questions that have already started to come in. And, and some of this may take a little bit a uh, little bit more time than we we uh we have today, but we'll see if we can get to all of these questions because the first thing I do is normally, as you know, I get to the questions that we had from last week. So we had a question from last week also from Dean. And um, he's asking the question about, is there a way to custom sign the seller's agreement? Okay. Anyway. To custom sign the seller's agreement. Okay, and and in terms of the uh, sellers, yes, you can. Okay, so uh, normally, and I believe this, I, I, I think I know what he's talking about in terms of uh, when you go into campaigns here and you look at the different offers or you have an offer agreement. Right now, the way the system is set up, let's see, that's 10. Okay. Okay, so right now when we come in and we have the different sale agreements, and right now we don't automatically have a sign your signature print on the offer or even on the cover letter. 
So in both cases, here's the cover letter. And as you can see, there's no signature here. Um, now, if someone wanted to have their signature automatically print on either the offer or the offer envelope, um, what would be necessary is they would need to create a custom document, okay? Um, and just for the sake of time here, we do have a custom uh, test offer document. Now, if if I wanted this to, you know, um, go out to my customer, you know, with an offer on it, uh, I would create, now this has been, uh, this is another format of, of one, but basically you'd have to create a custom document of your particular offer here, all right? And what you would do, you go in and you edit that document and right where you would have the person sign or right, right where the signature would be, you want to place your cursor there and then you go into insert merge field. And so I guess Dean wants to make sure he's got his signature onto every printed offer and the offer uh, the sale agreement and the, um, oh, I'm losing it right here, but your sale agreement basically and the other offer envelope or other offer letter that would go out, um, you would put in this particular insert merge field, which is your signature. So as you can see, it comes back and it says my signature, right? So whatever, so what, what's going to happen is investment dominator is going to pull my signature automatically, all right, from the system. And then of course, you update this. All right. So we, and remember, we called it the new offer test 04, right? And so if we were to preview this document, then you would see my signature automatically gets put into this particular document. So that's basically the way for any document that you want your signature to automatically appear you basically have to create a document template of that particular document and like i say you edit it and then you put in the my signature and you get it from the insert merge field and so that will automatically put you know put your signature in there and you could then, um, then you wouldn't have to sign it. Uh, just so you know, in, in our particular case, I'm gonna take that out right now because I don't really want that in there. Um, in our particular case, we do sign all of our documents, you know, by hand. So especially our offer that go out of our investment dominator. Um, that's totally up to you if you want to sign yours or if you want to have your signature automatically put in. Um, I can't say I know or I have any experience with, uh, you know, which one works better. <laughs> OK, so it's just been our experience that, you know, people that we deal with, they like uh, they like to see an actual signature. So uh, we've been we've been successful with actually printing off the documents. And remember, now remember, because you created a custom off, custom document, when you do go and you present or you, you know, you get uh, your documents out of Investment Dominator, like at the end of a week when you've pre-created all your documents, 
remember the fact that you created a custom document, you have to open up your custom documents and you have to come and find your custom document that was created. And then you can um, use those documents, right? That you created. You, um, you know, so a lot of people make changes, they create a custom document, and then they look for their offer up here somewhere. And it's under the custom document templates. All right, just want you to keep that in mind. So Dean, I hope that uh, that does help uh, give you a little clarity there. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, this is kind of a, Side question that I, I I don't figure out how to answer, Don. That you're asking about what you helped needed to do. Okay, and and I don't. It's not. It's not exactly. It's not exactly the same issue. Um, Don is talking about the. I believe. Let's see. Oh, fixing the APN numbers that are 100% correct. Um, I understand what you're saying, Don. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can address that here. Okay, Don helped another student um, deal with APNs that were coming in in like a scientific format or um, they're coming in as a formula, as opposed to, uh, let me see if I even have an example of that. Okay. Okay. Didn't have an example, an example of this uh, standing by, so. I'm kind of uh, coming up with this on the fly here. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see if I have an example of some that have. APNs that have the numbers in them. I don't know that I do here. Uh, we'll see, maybe. Okay, well, I don't have an example of one right now, but he's, he was talking about, Don was talking about where the APN um, number comes in and it looks kind of like a, uh, It looks like a formula. Um, you know, it might be like this, and it's plus. Uh, you know, and it, but it's not. It's not really showing as a full APN. And you know, Don had done some work to help import this type of APN format successfully. Um, and, and it's saying basically that when it's exported from the investment dominator, you have to open it in a non Excel format, like a text file or something like that. And then you basically would come in and add an apostrophe in front of this value so that it 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 will then change it to the number field but that's that's not exactly what we're talking about i understand what you're saying don but we're not uh in in this particular instance this is just a this is a, an example that i'm talking about is where the apn actually is coming in from let's say rebo gateway or it's coming in from agent pro 247 and it's it's actually in number format but it's it's an incorrect number, 
It's just incorrect. So sometimes we have those conditions where Rebo Gateway or even from the county, um, that's very seldom from the county, but it's more like for these list services, Rebo Gateway or Agent Pro 247, the APN might not be correct. Um, so where Don's example is, um, when APN is an, oh my goodness, okay, APN is in a formula format. And then Don is asking, um, let's see, do we, is there a new instruction? Is there new instructions? And I'm assuming he's talking about in Investment Dominator. In Investment Dominator to address, you know, for other people to know how to do this. For others to know how to handle this. Um, and the answer to that is no. We haven't gotten to this point to where we can explain, you know, um, exactly what people are going to do to open, you know, if the APNs come in in a certain, uh, looking like their formulas and how we want to handle that. So far, um, all we do is let people know the right, how to format the APN before they import it into Investment Dominator. That's the only thing we have instructions on. So to answer your question, John, no, we don't have those instructions at this time. And uh, I'm not, I'm gonna have to talk with Alex and company to determine, um, you know, exactly when, we're, if we're gonna put in those kinds of instructions and how detailed we're gonna get, et cetera, et cetera. So, because um, the majority of the cases, we don't, we don't have to deal with that. So uh, hopefully there's some clarity there. Uh, let's see. All right. Okay, 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 let's see. Uh, okay, then at the cross stream, front of the end. okay, all right. Okay. Let's, um, another question we had from last week that we didn't get a chance to answer right away. Um, because we had so much going on. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, this is kind of a straightforward question that Dean had. That uh, based on the discussions I've been getting from different ones, we want to make sure we answer it for everybody. Okay. Dean's question is, when do we change the status? Okay, when do we change the status after um, sending, like, basically bringing in prospect neutral levels? All right, so that's a pretty, pretty straightforward question. Uh, when do we change status? Okay. After sending prospect neutral letters. Uh, this is something that's, this is your initial change when you're coming into, you bring records into Investment Dominator. So, you know, we basically, but, but even before I go there, I want to make sure that you understand. All right. Okay. On this LPG deal flow, this is the LPG deal flow. 
And I want you to know that every aspect or every stage of the LPG deal flow, or most stages, um, you could be at a place where you want to change your status at some point. Okay. Um, obviously, we're selecting a target market and we get a contact list of owners. You go to your list, you, okay, you basically import into Investment Dominator at this point, and then you mail your letters and you talk to sellers. All right. So, so see, at different stages of the LPG deal flow, you have different statuses that you're going to handle um, with Investment Dominator. And I don't want to confuse anybody, so I'll go on and to show you. You've brought your records into Investment Dominator. They're in prospect status. Now, once we come up here and we do a global, basically we send all of our prospect records here. This is your prospect records. We send all of these out. These go to letterprinting.net. You send them your template and your envelope template. All right, this is your prospect status. So, so now that all these prospects have now been sent out to letterprinting.net, you're done with that particular phase. You wanna come over here. The last thing you wanna do at the end, and this answers your question, Dean, is you wanna do a bulk update of all of the records the prospect records, and you want to move them from prospect status to mail letter one status. That's got to be the last thing you do because, um, you know, I myself, even when I was first in the business, I would forget to do this step, right? And then when I came back into Investment Dominator, all these were still in prospect status. I would then come in here and import a whole bunch more records into Investment Dominator. So I would choose my file, upload my list. And so I had my previous prospect records that I just handled last week. And then now I brought in new prospect records. So essentially I ended up sending, you know, my records, I sent up neutral letters out to the same people I sent them out to before because Instead of having 250 prospects, now I have 500 prospects. So it's very important that, you know, once you're done with your campaigning, okay, you've done your campaign, you've now brought these records, you've sent them to letterprinting.net. Very important, your last step to do that same week, like that same day, is do your bulk update move it to the mail letter one status. And so then the next week when you come in and you import another set of prospects, the other ones are already out of the way and you're only dealing with the prospect records you bring in. Okay, that, that does also, you know, it's also good to know that that's why we say we only want you to bring into Investment Dominator the prospect records that you're going to deal with that week. We have uh, some of you students out there have several thousand records in your import file, right? And you wanna bring all several thousand into Investment Dominator at the same time. You can do that, but now you have to manage all of those records. Um, you have like 18,000 prospect records. You don't wanna send out 18,000 right now. You only wanna send out 500. So you have to now um, basically control the 500 that you want to send out of the Investment Dominator each week. So that's that's a little bit more tricky. It can be done, but it takes a little bit more manipulation and it's harder to do, it's harder to maintain than if you only import the 500 at a time or the 250 at a time that you wanna deal with each week. And that's the whole reason why we um, we ask that you do it that way so that uh, 
you do not get confused and you don't end up mailing, um, you know, two neutral letters to the same customer. All right. So you got to get this process down each week and then you will find it uh, much easier. And that's what we have Investment Dominator for to help you manage that process from one week to the next. Um, so let's see, we got a question here. Um, Want to be recorded? Play A and A sessions. You're ready to import into the investment dollar. Another place. Download the template. Okay. Well, let me see, Jim. Let's see. You said on one of the recorded weekly Q&A sessions, you gave a template for Excel set up. Oh, and ready to import into the Dominator. Can you remember which date that was on? I wish I could, Jim. Um, <laughs> or is there another place where you can download that template your list from Agent Pro 247. Excel setup, ready to import. Okay, well, I can show you. I'm hoping I'm getting your question right. I can show you where we have the import list for Investment Dominator. And that's under the help guide, search your user guide and import uh, and it's how to import your list for land investing okay and this is the actual article and this is the actual file format that you need okay um, you can download the, the template from my list. And you said download the template for your list from Agent Pro 247. Um, so that's the only thing that makes me think that there was, I know I did one week uh, communication on, you know, basically, how you know okay I, I did a communication on how you can you can make the you have to understand the fields that agent pro brings back all right agent pro 247 brings back and then how to bring them over into the right format for investment dominator and i'm wondering if that's what you're speaking of because i did do a teaching on that where I, I was a there was a format that Agent Pro 247 has, and I showed how you could take the format from Agent Pro 247 and you can how you can convert it over into the right format so that Investment Dominator basically from the fields that Agent Pro 247 has, how you can bring it over into the fields that Investment Dominator can use. So I'm not I'm not sure if that's the if that's the teaching that you're speaking of, Jim, or um, or if this is the teaching that where it's just, you know, these are the fields that you need. Okay. And this is the format. So I'll need a little more clarification there so I can make sure I get your right question. Um, okay. Recording uh, weekly live Q and A. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think I do remember doing that, Jim. Jim said I emailed a template already prepared with the exact fields in place. Yeah, I, I think I do remember. I do remember doing that. Um, it's been a while, uh, so I will have to go back and dig that one up. Um, let's see. Let's see. Live Q and A call using a template for Excel. Okay. Set up to import. Um, and this is specifically Agent Pro two four seven. Okay. To Excel or Investment Dominator ready format. Okay, I think I, I got the question. Um, I'm going to have to look that one up. I'm going to have to look that one up and uh, and get that ready for the next webinar. Uh, because I think I do know exactly what you're speaking of, Jim. Um, and, and, and basically, so that it can help people understand, in order to get data in this format, you know, type, first name, um, I, what I did, I had a list of fields for Agent Pro 247. I think I also had one for Rebo Gateway and and how we need to map back to the fields for Investment Dominator so that you would know the fields that come from Agent Pro 247 and the fields that uh, go into um, Excel for the format for Investment Dominator. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't have that handy today. I'm going to have to actually look that up. Um, view all the fields. Okay, let me see if I can uh, make sure I catch these questions that we didn't get. Um, that we didn't get last week. Um, can we do a change? Okay. Very good. Um, okay. So, so Carlos did have a question here. Um, that was from last week. The dot CSV file. That he downloads. From investment dominator. Okay. Okay, seems to remove, and it does, um, it does remove leading zeros. I'd say we have, a, we have a lot of issues with the uh, APN sometimes. In APN. So, So the question comes back, okay, you have, sometimes you have leading zeros with some of the APNs and 
it sounds like what Carlos is saying is that, now let me make sure I get the question right. So he downloads it from the investment dominator. Oh, it seems to remove the leading zeros. Is that normal? And see some of some APNs that have the leading zeros, you actually want those leading zeros in your APN. So is that normal? It's normal only if you don't format it as a number field. Okay, so, so one of the things you want to do here is APN and you want to right click on this and you want to format sales. Now, this is this is to be done before you import this into Investment Dominator. Okay. Yeah, you definitely want to right click, say format cells, and then you want to select number here. And I think you know we've we've uh, formatted or shown this format a few times. And you want to make sure you take it down to zero places and then you click OK. So because what, what Excel normally will do, if it has zeros, it has leading zeros in the numbers, because it's a scientific program, it automatically truncates the zeros unless you specify that this is a file or this is a column that has all numbers in it and that every single digit is to be considered a number. So that's why you right click, you say format cells, you select number, make sure decimal places is zero, and you click OK. Then you save this file. All right, after you've done that formatting. Um, and then Excel will remain and keep your zeros, your leading zeros in your APN. So Carlos, that's that's the the only way I know to tell you is the, the best way to um, that's the best way to keep your z leading zeros intact. All right, is to make sure you format every APN um, column before you import it. So you're going to save this, and now you're ready to import this file into Investment Dominator, and Investment Dominator will keep your APNs intact. Okay, I'm hoping that's clear for everybody. Uh, we do get that a lot, and uh, that's normal. Okay, so we do have one other question that we didn't get to last week, but what I'm going to do is go back up here. All right, up here at the top. Okay, earlier we had a question. Okay, how to modify a letter, an envelope with a logo or photo? Okay, Thomas, um, we can, you can modify, you can definitely modify a letter and an envelope with a logo. Um, photo, you have to, you're really going to have to play around with because it's got to be in, in a certain pixel size. But, uh, I could show you how to do a basically a custom document and put in your you know your logo let's say all right so how to modify a letter and envelope with a logo or photo. Uh, 
Okay, don't do this too often, but uh, we should be able to figure something out here. So, if I were under uh, customize, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get a custom document, and we have to find one here. Um, let's look at this custom offer letter 01 and see. Custom offer letter. So if I wanted to actually put in a logo, let's say up top here. All right. So I, I will already created a custom offer letter. So the best thing, the best, the quickest way I can think to do it, first of all, you have to have this somewhere on your computer in a logo. And okay, let me get the dimensions um, 40. Make sure that I get them correctly for a logo. Okay, for a logo. For logo, we, we know that we need to have them be at least uh, 207 pixels by 54 pixels high. So again, here, logo. Two oh seven pixels by fifty four pixels high. All right, that's your logo dimensions to bring them into Investment Dominator successfully. All right, so that's that's the first thing. So you have to have it on your computer um, sized as follows. All right. So once you have that, then let's see, I'm gonna edit. All right, and I'm gonna put my cursor where I want the logo to actually come in. Now remember, this is a HTML, basically an HTML setup. So you can define where I can bring in an image. Here, here we go, image. There's all these different facets for an HTML. I mean, you can bring in lists, you know, you can bring in obviously different images, um, embed embedded media, you can bring in tables, but we're gonna bring in an image here of a logo. And so now I'm going to have to upload this logo, all right? So I'm gonna upload an existing, so now I've gotta choose it from my computer. You know, as an image, now here's a sample logo that I've already got in a PNG file. So it's in a PNG or a JPEG file. And I am going to select that. Now, when I bring it in, after I choose it, it's important that you understand you haven't really brought this all the way into Investment Dominator yet. All you've done is chosen it from your computer. The next step is you have to send it to our server. So this is a very important step. And, and nine times out of 10, people forget once they choose the file, then they want to come down here and click OK, and they think they've got it. No, you've got to send it to the Investment Dominator server. This is a very important step here. Um, and without it, the file goes away. So I'm going to send it to the server. As you can see now, it's going to appear here. Now I can click OK, and it brings it into the actual file. So. 
That's the only change I'm going to make here. Everything else is going to remain the same. I'm going to say update. Okay. And of course, I think I, I said it as a custom custom offer letter. So if I preview the document of that, as you can see, I brought the logo in and it's now a part of every document that uh, that's going to go out as an offer, right? So, but it's in custom offer letter 01. So when I come in here and I do my campaigns, and I print out now, I'm saying I want to print out all my offers, but you can't look for it up here because remember, it's not, it's in a custom document. So you have to come down here, custom offer letter 01, I believe is one we used. And as it opens up, let's see. As it opens up now, for every single offer that I print, it's going to have my logo. Okay. Now that's that's the shortest version of, you know, that I can think of how to actually do that. Um, but that's how we would bring in an actual logo. Uh, the first thing is important to have the logo be the correct size so that it's going to be visible um, and or your photo. Um, you know, you can bring in photos into Investment Dominator um, just like you can Let's see if I go in now. Edit. I want to delete that. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, we're just bringing in an image. So if I actually wanted to, but you have to always upload it. You have to always choose it. All right, and this is a this is an actual picture. Um, I can bring it in. I can send it to the server. All right. I can change the height and the width of it here. Um, and three, let's say, bring it to two. All right. And I can hit OK. So now I have sized it, and I brought that into my document. And of course, and of course, I'm you know I'm doing this just for just so you can get an idea here uh, what it would look like if I say update that. All right, and I preview my document. Yeah, I've got my my document. It's got I just put a photo into the investment dominator. All right, into my document that will print out on every single document. Um, this can be done for your documents. It can also be done for your envelope if you want. Uh, but it's it's just about that easy. It just takes a little. You're going to have to probably play around with it a little bit in terms of the size so that, uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, if you, the way you do a, okay, the, the custom, getting the custom, well, we're, we're out of time here. I will, I will, uh, get that other information to you, Thomas. He says, okay, he doesn't have a, um, does not have a custom letter or an envelope to use to start off with. Okay, you, 
that's pretty easy to obtain, all right? That's where we come in under custom documents and we say we want to add a document. And we come in here and we say for land only and we go through, you know, exactly how to put in um, a custom document. But the, the quickest, since I'm out of time here, basically, there is a, there's plenty of articles on how to add custom documents um, in Investment Dominator. And I'm sure we search our user guide. Custom documents. Okay, how to create custom letters and documents. How to customize one of Jack's offer templates. How to customize one of Jack's neutral letter templates. Um, these these list of instructions are pretty much the same. It's just a matter of where you get the actual source of that documentation. But uh, it can it can show you how to create you know your custom letters and documents and uh, and I can also you know I can also work with you Tom since you and I you know you and I talk together so um, we'll we'll figure that part out okay that's not a problem but this is basically how you create your custom documents you can take one of those and then you can create your own custom document so that you'll have a version of your custom document in here and then you can add your own logo or add your own picture okay so um thank you folks for for being on the call and for uh so many good questions you're very welcome uh, patrick yeah, glad you found this helpful let me leave you with this thought here for this evening i hope all of you have a great week and uh as I say, we won't be here on Thursday, but we will be here next Monday once again. Um, there is a stubbornness about me that can never bear to be frightened at the will of others. My courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. That was a quote from Jane Austen of Pride and Prejudice. So there is a stubbornness about me that never can bear to be frightened at the will of others. My courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. And uh, I tell you, one of, the, one of the things I've had to confront myself uh, so many times in this business is not whether or not I was going to be successful, but what would that do with all of my excuses once I became successful and I actually knew that this business worked? then I would have no more excuse for not producing. Uh, that's something to really confront ourselves with. Um, some of us are not so much afraid of failure as we are afraid of success. That's what I've seen um, in the hearts and minds of a few. So uh, don't be afraid to confront yourself. Uh, dare to be successful because you will be. If you get in line, stay in line and just uh, stay the course all right you guys have a great great week and i'll be looking forward to talking with you again on monday 5 p.m take care now bye-bye